Right. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this morning um, in our latest installment of Impero Talks. Uh, I'm Corris from Impero, and taking you through today's presentation, we've got our strategy director, Charlotte Wilcox. So this week, we're focusing on the coffee category, taking a closer look on how and why people's relationship with all things coffee has changed and, and the new type of coffee consumers that have uh, have come to be since uh, things have changed uh, since March. So before I pass you over to Charlotte, I really want to just um, take a small time to thank you for the challenges and concerns you shared when you were registered. If we haven't touched on them in the presentation, then don't hesitate to add a question either in the chat or in the Q&A tab at the bottom of the Zoom window as we'll be uh, taking questions towards the end. And if, if anything that you've heard throughout the presentation resonates with the challenges that you're considering or facing in the year ahead, and you'd like to explore any of these themes further, then we'd be happy to discuss setting up a, a session or a workshop, workshop just to do um, that. So um, what I'll do now is I'll pass you over to Charlotte and she'll kick straight into the presentation for you. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining us today, everybody. Hope everyone's got a cup of coffee ready to go through this. So in preparation for this session, um, as Chorus briefly mentioned, we also in interviewed some industry experts as well to kind of see what's keeping you guys up at night. And overwhelmingly, the theme was really, as Chorus touched on, the changing needs of these consumers and how best to serve them. A lot of you were talking about having new entrants to your part of the category, maybe not new to coffee, but certainly new to your part of the category. So what do we know about these consumers and where do the opportunities lie for brands such as yourselves? So hopefully the session today will really help kind of either validate some of the planning you've already got underway or maybe spark some new ideas that we can talk about further um, in the Q&A after or at a later date as well. So first things first, while I'm no Mystic Meg, absolutely not, we do have a couple of tricks up our sleeves to help us kind of make these educated guesses about kind of the trends that are coming our way and which are growing and which are set to kind of drop off a little bit. So we can really help focus our energies in the right places. And we use um, trend prediction mapping. So we're um, all the time tracking over 400,000 micro influencers and how they're behaving online, what they're talking about, what they're sharing to really help us hone in on the trends that are worth worrying about and maybe the ones that are just sort of passing. And in addition to that, um, I've also spent the last couple of weeks talking to consumers, so real consumers, um, exploring 12 households and how their routines have changed, how their consumption has changed and how their purchase has changed to really help inform the session. So the two focuses for today are gonna be changing rituals. This is looking at more kind of purchase behaviors and consumption behaviors, and also self-care, which is obviously a huge, huge trend with a myriad of trends underneath it. So we wanted to identify kind of what is most interesting for you guys in coffee. So we'll kick off with changing rituals. So the first trend we identified within changing rituals was shop small. So shop small is predicted to grow and steadily grow quite, quite sharply really over 33% over the next six months. And we think kind of this has really come from and been driven by this change in consumer behavior to think a lot more locally and live a lot more locally. Obviously, we've been forced to really become quite accustomed to our own neighborhoods and really kind of explore what there is there to enjoy. And it, really what this has meant is sea stores have become really the unexpected hero of lockdown and they're set to still increase by further 8% in 2020. And what this has done is kind of shift to local and kind of we're not really going into kind of bigger towns or city centers as much anymore. It's really forced consumers out of their normal routines and really helped them develop this kind of taste for discovery and taste for the unique. And we actually kind of upon digging deeper found that the kind of term unique and um, independent is set to increase also over the next six months. And we also think potentially this is due to, and we pushed kind of our focus groups on this a bit further, that people are spending more time like thinking about what they're buying, kind of more time researching, more time kind of looking in local stores where obviously the ranges are very different. And this has really also been fueled by what is known as the lipstick effect. So I'm sure we've all been very privy to this over the last year or so. Kind of the big ticket items are really off the table. So the holidays, the cars, everything we would have been kind of saving for potentially is off the table. And what that's done is shifted kind of to this everyday luxuries sort of structure so where people are kind of really spending and elevating their spending in their everyday life rather than obviously saving up for the big yearly holiday 
And what this has done is created a very disloyal consumer set, to be honest, that only a quarter of consumers are saying they've stayed loyal during lockdown. That was a, some Mintel report that was recently, um, recently written. And, but on the flip side of that, the kind of good thing for brands is that's providing quite a unique opportunity and a unique window for lesser known brands to be noticed and enjoyed. So potentially before lockdown where you would have maybe been snacking on your multi-pack of crisps, you might be kind of elevating and upgrading your snacking game to maybe kind of more of an independent brand. An example here that's seen great success is Popcorn Shed. And also in your own category, so thinking about where you would have maybe just boshed together a quick instant coffee in the morning, now you may be elevating yourself to kind of a more kind of bespoke coffee experience. And in a time when now kind of the big ticket items, as I said, are off the table for many, kind of quality coffee and these everyday um, extravagances, let's say, are really kind of shifting up that hierarchy of needs. People are increasingly finding them really important in their day to kind of keep them through this kind of really tough time. So we think there is a, a kind of opportunity here for brands to really capitalize on this trend for quality over quantity and kind of thinking more locally and really indulge consumers in kind of new interest and new revived interest in variety and discovery. So by that, it could be anything from kind of, you know, partnering with more local roasteries, thinking about local flavors, understanding kind of that even no matter how big the brand is you're working for, you, there's still elements kind of localization that can be done within our own country and within kind of local areas. Um, so that could really feed into consumers love of all things local and shopping small. So that takes us on to our second trend, so that's subscription society. And I'm going to start with a, a, a bit of a uh, depressing fact to kick us off. So what's known as the prison time warp. So when digging into subscriptions and kind of why they've seen such a kind of huge increase, um, I stumbled across uh, what is known as the prison time warp. So I'm sure we've all felt this over the last few months. So that feeling where months are passing at great, what seems like great speed, you can't quite remember or put your finger on what you've done or what's happened or kind of what day it is or what time it is. And really we're living on this life, in this life on repeat. And that's due to kind of, we're not making as many memories because there's not as many social anchors and without them, without these kind of regular social anchors from a life BC, which is before COVID, I can't write COVID anymore in decks. Um, consumers are really manufacturing these smaller moments of daily excitement instead. So this is one way that kind of um, subscriptions are really fed into this kind of, how can I add a bit, a, a bit of difference to my day, a variety to my day, kind of stop that monotony. And that's where subscriptions really come in. And we've seen a really huge increase kind of from 2019 to 2020, an increase of 39.4%. And when I say subscriptions, I don't just mean things like Netflix, like Prime. These are kind of more bespoke and more product focused. So they're really, consumers are really looking for that kind of one-on-one -on -one experience still from brands. And subscription packs are really interesting way of doing that especially now where kind of driving to brick and mortar is becoming increasingly difficult. You know, we've got a country that's kind of half in lockdown, half not in lockdown. It's hard to know kind of what is and isn't allowed when it comes to comms, especially at a national level. So there's still a definitely a thirst from consumers to experience these one-on-one -on -one, um, kind of more premium experiences. And the example here, um, is from Hotel Chocolat, where they've created what's known as the inventing room, which is a pack you get kind of fresh off the production line of kind of their latest, most exclusive blends and flavors. And you can try them at home and kind of experiment yourself. So it's like you're getting kind of that in-store experience, but in the comfort of your own home. And this is something that really came out as well through our focus groups, as, as much as people are kind of making coffee, of course, more increasingly at home, the kind of pull of cafe, like cafe culture and kind of the elevated experience is still really strong. Um, you know, even though uh, uh, Mickey there says, even though I've been making more coffee at home, I still prefer buying out. There's more variety. There's more kind of, it's more of a kind of holistic experience. That you kind of feel like you're giving yourself a little treat. So we do think there lies an opportunity for brands here as well. So recreating that kind of cafe culture experience in the comfort of people's home through these direct to consumer D2C experiences. And we were also kind of coincide with that, seeing an increase in the term premium being searched as well, but almost kind of getting on for half in the next year. And this is actually a trend I've seen kind of more globally too. So consumers in general are searching for terms like premium, the best, kind of top. We're not necessarily kind of searching for cheapest anymore. People are expecting this more premium experience and kind of D2C 
um, through subscriptions or just direct consumer comms is a great way of kind of exploring how you can still kind of manifest that face-to-face face-to-face experience at home. So the third and final trend within changing rituals is the joy of analog. As most of us, I'm sure, are tuning in from home, um, with uh, also along with 60% of the workforce as well, kind of those normal cues we're used to um, are really out the window. And that's really shifted kind of work for a lot of people to kind of, well, maybe some lucky people from a nine to five kind of certainty to this very, very kind of 24 seven, always on, almost a slight drain on kind of your day-to-day life and your balance of your life. So kind of phenomena such as Zoom fatigue, you just quick Google, it's all over the internet. Zoom fatigue is now almost a real element that many are feeling. And this was something also mirrored by our focus groups as well. So kind of people are trying to recreate that face-to-face moment kind of through Zoom calls, through kind of virtual meetings. It's just not the same. And people are kind of getting sick of kind of trying to recreate those face-to-face sessions within Zoom. And particularly affected by this phenomenon is everyone's favorite demographic are the poor millennials, like we haven't been through enough already, but we are now being also coined generation burnout. We're the most likely to be juggling multiple jobs, young families, children, maybe some semblance of a social life, who knows anymore. And they've been hugely affected by this kind of new shift to this sort of 24 hour life. And as a way of counteracting this, millennials are really starting to ritualize analog aspects of their lives as a way of kind of gaining back that control and a way of coping with the kind of chaos that's going around us. And uh, I don't know if you may have tuned in, I definitely got sucked into it. Um, So even having a simple clear out of your wardrobe isn't just that anymore. It's actually an Instagrammable experience. If if any of you have seen the home edit on Netflix, how to tidy up in an Instagrammable manner. And then also from the Dalgona coffee um, explosion that happened right at the beginning of lockdown, kind of where even just making a simple cup of coffee is now a a process and experience, a thing to take you out of your kind of digital life and really enjoy. And this is where we saw our consumer tension lying as well for this. So consumers are still really thirsty for these mindful rituals to help them deal with this 24 seven nature of their working day. And I think that was also mirrored with our um, focus groups too, just that real kind of pull to kind of just want to do something that isn't kind of fully digital. And we do see the opportunity here kind of tapping into these new rituals and linking product to kind of this joy of analog trends. So potentially kind of around the process, whether that's a process of kind of picking your coffee or shopping for your coffee or making the beverage itself, kind of there's definitely something within that kind of analog trend of like pulling yourself out of the digital world and kind of really kind of being at one with analog and, you know, not, not staring at a screen for a second. So kind of feeding into these new rituals that consumers are creating for themselves while they can't meet face to face. So just some key summaries from changing rituals. So consumer thirst for the unique and local discovery is set to rise. So something that uh, brands should definitely consider feeding into. Premium experiences at new touch points are gonna certainly become more of an expectation from consumers as they still would want, especially for more premium brands, that kind of faux face-to-face experience when they can't actually go to store. And finally, consumers are creating new daily rituals in this analog world and brands are really can win if they're aligning themselves with these new rituals, kind of not thinking about kind of old routines, like how does a day look like now for a consumer? It's certainly not as it was before. So that takes us on to our second focus for the session, which is self-care. So again, another damning graph for like Boris Johnson. Um, So national stress levels have been building consistently over the last six months, no big surprises there. But what that has led to is a kind of almost wave two explosion in self-care. So we're seeing this this trend certainly not waning. We're seeing this trend kind of growing over the next six to 12 months. And it really is kind of a phrase that's said a lot. It's been, it's not a new phrase, it's been around for a long time, Um, but we're certainly seeing this sort of wave two revival as people have more time on their hands. So we wanted to unpack a little bit about what that kind of um, self-care revival looks like this time around. And the first trend we identified was permissible indulgence. So as much as we've kind of been clapping for carers, you know, looking out for one another, really the overwhelming trend for kind of previous, like the recent lockdown has been looking after number one, becoming a priority for many consumers, really using this additional time to invest in yourself um, 
and kind of making sure that you yourself are feeling good so you can look after others. This was something that was pulled out by our co consumers as well. That they were very conscious that they maintained health and were healthy, especially if they were kind of helping others shield or helping people in their local community. And this widespread desire to kind of really set boundaries, I think this kind of time away has really made people rethink kind of the balance of work and play and work and rest. And it's led to people carving out kind of official, like long periods of time to just spend on themselves and just be permissibly selfish. And this has really led to a, a really acute rise in movements such as Self Care Sunday, which is a, a long running movement on Instagram. And at the moment has over well over a million hits as we speak. And these are obviously days, if you don't know what Self Care Sunday is, it's essentially a day of indulgence. You can just do anything to make yourself feel better, refresh for the week ahead. And this is something that you know ordinarily would have been filled with socializing or seeing friends but now it's really being spent on kind of self more selfish endeavors and we've actually seen kind of brands in other sectors who are aligning to a movement such as self-care sunday kind of a big self-care movement really seeing huge spikes in engagement so kind of over the first 10 months of this year um brands were seeing kind of 81% higher engagement levels than the previous. So we're really seeing kind of aligning to these new rituals that people are creating, these new routines is really seeing paying dividends for brands. And what it's also doing is uh, creating some rather, well, at the moment, rather niche, but also steadily, steadily growing uh, kind of sub trends within um, social media and online. And this permissible indulgent friends uh, trend is really fueling them. So the first one at the top there is what's known as cozy core, which you may or may not have heard of, which is essentially is the aesthetic of coziness. So you think like thick knits, hot drinks, books, like low lighting, surrounded by nice plants. Like this is something that people are really kind of uh, indulging in. And it obviously, again, it's kind of fed by the Instagram generation of kind of showing a, a kind of life through tinted glasses. And the bottom one there, which is set to very sharply increase is what's known as cottage core which is a kind of maybe also tapping into a bit of that analog trend as well kind of it's a nod back to more wholesome times where zoom did not exist and you could get on with kind of your baking your reading your gardening anything that's kind of of a time of yesterday so kind of especially amongst younger consumers these we're seeing lots of these kind of sub trends really popping up and people really indulging in them in quite an impressive way So on the whole, we're really seeing that time that would have been spent at that time and money that would have been spent on commuting and indulging being redistributed to themselves. So we're seeing decadence as a trend increasing, um, has increased by 55% over the last 18 months and is also set to continue to grow over the next six months. So people are not scrimping. They're kind of not, they're treating themselves as number one and they're kind of looking to brands to really help them do that. So we see an opportunity here for brands to really come together to help consumers to self-indulge by creating decadent moments and experiences around your brand. And the way we think this could be working, it's not, it's kind of thinking outside of your category. So kind of coffee, what is a complementary set of products that could work around this? Could we kind of create working from home packs, detox, digital detox packs, kind of um, Sunday pampering packs, like anything that kind of helps elevate your product and create kind of more of a long time experience and time with your consumer past that kind of drinking occasion. And the second trend within this self-care section is holistic health. So I'm sure many of you on the phone, such as myself, really kind of use this time to rethink about kind of their health in a more holistic way. So not just physical, thinking about your mental health, thinking about what you're eating. Um, and I think this is something that really kind of got caught the attention of many consumers during lockdown. And what we've also seen is kind of the fads and complicated regimes of BC before, before COVID are the things of the past and kind of this more inclusive um, fitness and health experience is being kind of seen by many now. And I guess wellness and well-being was once kind of the something for kind of the elite and the few to enjoy. But certainly now um, it's a much more inclusive platform. And we're seeing brands such as Spotify at the top there kind of making playlists for you to work out at home too. We're seeing apps such as Feelsome at the bottom on the right there, which is um, a, an app which uses chatbot technology to help you feel better every day. It basically talk to a robot that kind of tracks your mood so you can understand kind of how you're feeling and how to kind of get yourself out of a funk if you ever get in one. And what this has also seen is a search for terms such as joyful health being on the rise. 
So kind of as consumers really find ways to seamlessly incorporate wellness into their everyday life. So no longer is kind of wellness and health something you kind of have to drag yourself out of bed to kind of think about. And it's a real slog and something you have to do. Consumers are really starting to see the benefit of it and really starting to, to see it as something they want to do and trying to find ways that it can just fit into their new routines. Whereas before you'd be kind of squeezing it between meetings or at lunchtime or before and after work. Now kind of your time is a lot more fluid. So there are a lot more different opportunities for brands to engage in these kind of new moments. And one of the biggest successes in this sense has been podcasts. So, okay, obviously a huge trend before lockdown, but they're seeing a huge, huge spike since lockdown where people have a lot more listening occasions to attend to. No longer is it just um, your commute to and from work. We now have kind of a lot more me time and alone time to think about kind of what that soundtrack is. And actually now it's one in eight people kind of listening to podcasts every day. And that's an increase of 24% even on last year. So I don't see that really, really waning anytime soon. And when talking to our panel, they also confirm that kind of, even though they haven't got these sort of traditional cues of kind of coffee breaks and meetings to kind of have their cup of coffee, they're still using it as a way to punctuate their day with these small bursts of joy and really seeing it as a kind of escapism from the grind or from the Zoom and just really treating it as that time away for, them, for themselves. So kind of um, at the top there, kind of I use my coffee in, in the evening as a way to unwind and disconnect. And Jonathan there in the afternoon, afternoon, I like to sit on my balcony and take in the view with a coffee. So yeah, really viewing it as a way to kind of punctuate their day. And in terms of an opportunity for brands, we kind of think there might be an opportunity here to accompany your consumers' moments of daily joy with innovative media. So thinking about like, what is the soundtrack to these new moments and these new rituals? Because we're still gonna see kind of digital well-being maintaining strength over the next six to 12 months and also de de dedication, medication, meditation, sorry, is set to increase sharply over the next six months. And so this to me is kind of thinking about, okay, so. The digital space is obviously hugely full and it's, you know, people are kind of bounded all the time with different media and different ads, but then there are now new occasions and new mediums that we can kind of really kind of accompany our consumers along the way on their coffee breaks, on their walks. Is that through playlists, is that through podcasts, conversations, or even meditations, not medications, um, for your consumers' coffee breaks. And that takes us to the final trend within this section. So, this is called Alternative Boost. And so not only has kind of holistic health been on everyone's agenda for the last couple of months, certainly keeping active and kind of being, feeling more connected to your body has also been a way, a way bigger trend than before. When talking to our consumer groups, um, there's a lot of talk around kind of, oh, that kind of the lock, extra couple of pounds we put on during lockdown, finding it hard to shift, um, feeling really demotivated, like really not kind of the old, way of eating and drinking is just like not really working during lockdown because your, your movements are a lot, more di a lot different, your energy is a lot different. So this has really led us to seeing a real increase in people being a lot more connected to what they're putting in their body and also kind of what are the added benefits that products can give them. So we're seeing real sharp increases in things that we wouldn't necessarily expect consumers to be talking a lot about in, in previous years. So kind of B12, supplements, antioxidants, so thinking about additional benefits and if you pair that with kind of the fact that caffeine is actually set to decline in interest by 12% over the next 12 months, it starts to paint quite an interesting picture of kind of where consumers' minds are going, like what kind of is interesting them in terms of innovation or drinks away from traditional coffee. And just to further that, we're also seeing kind of alternatives set to increase it over the next six months. So really spending more time thinking about what they're putting in their bodies, what they're consuming, like what are the kind of added benefits, what can make them feel good and what can kind of, for minimum effort, what can make them feel good. And upon kind of further research, we found some pretty good innovation within this space as well, even through kind of within coffee. So kind of thinking about redefining kind of what energy means and how you get your energy from coffee. There's a lot of our um, focus group um, participants that were talking about kind of, I really do, drink coffee for the energy like that's it's not really the taste it's the energy of it so thinking about how you can still get that energy from elsewhere potentially through things like mushroom coffee and or shroom coffee as it's known here and then even within the coffee space so ready to drink additional benefit beverages so kind of lime ginger and honey kind of thinking about how they're kind of supporting their more holistic view of health and quite an interesting brand actually i found at the bottom there called rejuvenation water 
who are creating pods for your Nespresso machine, but instead of coffee, you're getting kind of health drinks. So you're thinking, I think that's a turmeric and ginger hot beverage. So you're thinking about how you can kind of use equipment for your coffee for other means as well. So for the opportunity for brands here, so indulging consumer interest in holistic health and innovate around multiple benefits of products. So potentially this would come into play in more of an innovation MPD space, but really thinking about kind of where these new consumers' minds are and how much more connected to their bodies they are. At the moment, we're not seeing a huge shift away from caffeine or away from coffee, but it's certainly something to think about as consumers are thinking about what they're putting in their body and kind of what it's doing to them and how they can get additional benefits elsewhere. So I think our kind of thinking about the competitive set and how that is changing. It's just worth thinking about the additional benefits of your own products and where your innovation is gonna lead you to. So that takes us to our key takeaways this section. So helping consumers to self-indulge by creating decadent moments around your brand. So thinking about how you can partner with other brands that still have the same kind of mood as your brand and think about how you can really extend that exposure to all of your brands with consumers. And then finding ways to accompany your consumers' moments of daily joy with innovative media. So thinking a little bit outside of the normal channel mix and thinking about these new rituals and these new moments outside of just the coffee break that you can um, apply your brand to and be a kind of soundtrack to your consumers' new rituals. And then indulging consumer interest in holistic health and innovate around their more holistic view of their bodies and what they're putting into their bodies. So that brings us to the end, just to kind of a quick recap of everything we've spoken about. So the consumer thirst for the unique in discovery is really not set to wane, that's really set to rise. So thinking about how you can really feed into uh, consumers' love of all things local. Um, premium experiences and thinking about new touch points and recreating that elevated in store or in cafe experience at home. Consumers creating new rituals within the analog world and how you can kind of feed into the fact that we are an analog product that with an analog drinking occasion. Thinking about decadent experiences with other brands and how you can elongate that exposure with consumers. Think about how innovative media can be a way of connecting through these new rituals and how you are planning to innovate your products around kind of additional benefits in thinking about holistic health in the future. So that takes us nicely onto Q&A. Great. All right, thanks very much, Charlotte. So um, just a reminder, if you do have any questions about anything that Charlotte's talked about, um, then drop a question into the chat or the Q&A. I guess I, I, having heard that actually for the first time, I've got um, just a few questions. So I, I think with all those trends you mentioned, um, which one do you see as being the biggest growth area that you'd, out of all those? I certainly see, I think for me, it's a bit, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. I, I, I personally see the self-care trends as being the ones that are sharply most likely to rise. And we're seeing them sort of the strongest trend in, but it's also kind of, if you kind of let collab that with the kind of change in, in rituals, it's gonna be those brands that are kind of quick to act and kind of quick to align with these new routines that are really gonna win. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. It's kind of, you can't have one without the other, um, in my opinion. Yeah, because like certainly from my point of view, you know, I got a coffee machine right at the start mm. of lockdown, and 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 it's almost that ritual of making my morning mm. cappuccino now. That's been that's locked in. Whereas yeah. before it would have been maybe a weekend thing if I thought. Yeah, those kind of much. daily treats are becoming super important, and actually, I think people get quite kind of put off when their routine changes. Now it's kind of it's so set as set as it was to go to work and come home from work. Like people create have got into creating their their own routines. And I've got a taste for it, I think. And as you say, yeah, those kind of set in stone moments are certainly different to what they were yeah, before. Yeah, because they say you need to do something for something like three or four weeks for it to become set in stone. So like you know, that is, you know, that's properly locked in now. So yeah, exactly. it's something, you know, it's something I was giving thought to this the other day. It's like, you go through your day and your taste buds change and you go, you you hit the evening period where maybe you, you'll go for a savory kind of um, food and drinks and and then, Sometimes it gets to the point I go to bed and I'm looking already looking forward to my morning coffee and you know because I've got two different types there's the one that literally just is instant that gets me up in the morning literally allows me to function as a, a you know a coffee. Coffee. <laughs> yeah, exactly right just that just powers me out of bed but then once I've you know done my morning routine then it's like taking time over the actual nice 
you know, mm. cappuccino with the froth milk, you know, to, to the point where I've actually broken my milk frother, you know, so, so. Yeah, it's that taste you know, of normality and, and, as well, isn't it? It's that taste of normality that you kind of get. I think that's something we, we, we certainly talk to our focus groups about when we, we chatted to them. It was like that, just like real yearning for kind of anything normal. So actually kind of creating that little kind of decadent coffee for yourself is like just little taste of normal, which I think everyone's really craving. Yeah, I think you also mentioned not just taste of normal, but just a, a small spike of something different. Other than, you know, so so that, that's, that, you know, that, I think that's, that's, that's really interesting from that point of view. So I guess based on those trends, like how can we make sure that the, the, the right consumers are getting the right com comms when it comes to each of those bigger trends you talked about? Yeah, so we started to actually look a little bit at this and we, when we were talking to our focus groups, we actually found that kind of, they quite neatly almost fell into kind of segments themselves. So we would definitely put this down to segmentation and kind of segmenting your audience, taking a long, hard look at your audience and kind of thinking about kind of what their need states are. So kind of like Chorus, you just said there actually, kind of your medicinal coffee versus your indulgent coffee. Consumers may straddle a couple of different segments, but certainly we saw that people are very much still in the camp of, I just drink coffee for energy. It is purely a medicinal experience that gets me up and that's all I see it, all I'll ever see it as, and that's fine. But then they're not gonna be interested in the comms around kind of the Dalgona coffee, whipped coffee experience versus kind of people like you and I, Chorus, who probably are more into kind of the ritualization of the coffee experience and would be more interested in maybe some of those D to C experiences so I think it really is almost taking stock and taking a look at getting your house in order and thinking about now you've got these new consumers, where are they sitting on your spectrum and trying not to kind of force them into a camp that they're not going to be in you can be a lot more efficient with your comms if you're able to kind of target the efficient guys with the content they just need to see at, on a channel they need to see it on. Yeah, and I guess on that, there might be the, there might be the case that some of those trends <clears throat> or some of those com, uh, the, those com brand comms can act as like a gateway just to take people to different parts of the coffee experience to kind of elevate them exactly. through the education. Exactly. exactly. So there are various levels of kind of interaction and knowledge. So there's kind of certainly work to be done to kind of almost bring people into the categories. It's, it's quite a, it's a confusing category if you're not kind of, if you've gone from instant, you're upgrading to kind of ground coffee and you've got your coffee machine that you said, chorus. Like it is kind of even choosing the right brand and the right like um, the right kind of grounds is hard enough. So I think there is a job to be done in terms of kind of educating these new properly new consumers, but then kind of bring them into the right journey for them. And, and if we if we're talking about kind of you know the type of comms, are, are there any uh, channels that lend themselves um, to each of these opportunities in any? In, in any way is, there, is do you yeah. see any, any one of these channels kind of being more preferable to to others that are not yeah it's an interesting question actually and it's one i'm especially at the moment asked a lot because i think we've seen obviously huge trends and huge sw swathes of budget being pumped into digital and social uh as obviously there's so much uncertainty on what you can actually do and get done in terms of in the real world but what i would say is kind of with all of these trends were kind of suit of course being kind of delivered in a digital and social manner but I do think there's something to be said for every plan, including or trying to include this kind of reality and face-to-face -face or experience focused uh, as a channel, especially the younger consumers kind of experience, they're experience driven, they're experience led, and they are overwhelmed with digital comms. So kind of thinking about how you can kind of separate yourself from the masses that are already on digital and social, and maybe like the Hotel Chocolat example, how can you create those kind of bespoke experiences, but on more of a one-to-one -one basis? It's kind of, it won't be for everybody, that experience, but I think it, it certainly gets you noticed and certainly sort of pulls you apart from kind of the droves of ads that you'll be seeing on social and digital. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's always the, always going to be the challenge forever forward, just cutting through and, and making that difference. But, okay, so, um, well, I just check to see if there are any questions. There, there doesn't seem to be, so it seems that all the, all the people have turned out that are, are, are completely fine with with their plans right. and, and that's great. Perfect. So, I've validated all of your planning for you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I think it, we'll we'll wrap it up there if there are no questions. But uh, you know, if you do have any that you um, you know think of afterwards, then don't hesitate to get in touch. You can reach me at uh, chorus at weareempera.com. Um, and then we're happy to, to continue the conversation if you feel there's a, a need to do so. So thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in. Charlotte, thanks very much. And we'll see you soon.